so now let us move on to the next part children which is chromosomal theory of inheritance uh, so mendel he did many observations and uh, he published his work on inheritance of characters in the year 1865 but for several reasons it was remained unrecognized till 1900 and there were few reasons why Mendel's work was left unrecognized. So in that first one is due to communication, right? So communication was not very easy during that period of time uh, as like now. So in those days, communication was not proper and his work would not be widely published. So throughout the world, they did not come to know about the uh, findings of Mendel. And secondly, his concept of gene or factors, which we call now as gene, which he called them as factors, as stable and discrete units that controlled the expression of traits and uh, and of the pair of ideals which do not blend with each, with each other was not accepted by his contemporaries as an explanation for atom, apparently continuous variation seen in nature. Right. So the second reason where his concept of gene, <coughs> that is gene which is stable and discrete unit that controlled the expression of traits and of the pair of alleles where did not blend. So in his experiment we saw that there was no blending of the characters. Right. So he got any one of the parental trait but he did not get any blended trait and this was not accepted because um, people were able to see variations in the nature itself right so apparently these variations continuous variations were seen in the nature so that was the second reason for which um, it was got unrecognized and the third one is Mendel's approach of using mathematics to explain biological phenomena was totally new and it was unacceptable to many of the biologists at that time Right? And finally, though Mendel's work uh, suggested that factors were discrete units, he could not provide any physical proof for the existence of factors or what they were made of. Right? So he was able to find something called factor, but he was not able to provide a proof for that. And also, uh, he, um, I mean, uh, he also did not have the proof that the factors exist and what they are made up of so all these informations was not found in Mendel's work so that only it was remained unrecognized for a longer period of time right so he could not give any physical uh, proof for the existence of the factors or what it is made up of Endrakondani factors and proof on the his work remained unrecognized for a uh, I mean for many years and in the year 1900 uh, three scientists they independently rediscovered the mendel's result right so these uh, three scientists were de Veres, corens corens and von trimac right so it should be pronounced as trimac so these were the three people who independently rediscovered mendel's results on inheritance of characters and also by this time uh, due to advancement in microscopy that was taking place, that is due to the development of electron microscope and all, scientists were able to carefully absorb, uh, that is observe the cell division, right? So the cell division process, they were, they were able to completely observe it using the electron microscope. And due to this, this led to the discovery of structure in the nucleus that appeared to double and divide just before each cell division. So using that microscope, they studied the structure of nucleus and inside the nucleus, they saw something that started doubling and divide just before each cell division. And they call these as chromosomes. So these were called as chromosomes, which are colored bodies as they were visualized by staining. So they were appeared, appearing in a colored structure because they were, uh, they were using the uh, stains to study about the chromosome. And uh, in, by about 1902, the chromosome movement during meiosis have been worked out. Okay, by the year 1202, so by 1100, they started independently discovering Wendell's result. And in uh, 1102, that is 1102, what happened was, uh, they studied about the, it means that scientists, they studied about the chromosome movement during meiosis and they have worked out it, right? And Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary, these were two noted scientists 
who noted the behavior of chromosome which was parallel to the behavior of genes so these two people they identified that the chromosome was acting very parallel to the behavior of the genes and used chromosome movement to explain the mendel's law so these two people they were the one who used chromosome to uh, that is chromosome movement to explain the mendel's law right so we have studied about the behavior of chromosome during mitosis which is equational division and also during meiosis which is a reduction division right so we have to remember some important things that or that chromosomes as well as genes occur in pairs both of them occur in pairs and the two alleles of a gene pair are located on the homologous sides of the homologous chromosome okay where are these located they are located the two alleles of the gene pair are located in on the homologous sides of on homologous chromosome they say they say that, they say that the pair of the alleles that is Uh, a gene which is coding for one particular trait the pair of alleles the two alleles of a gene pair are located on homologous sites on homologous chromosome so think that this is a chromosome and this chromosome has a site for the eye color think that the eye color of the uh, i mean think think that the gene which is coding for the eye color is capital b capital b right so these two alleles will occupy the same position in the chromosome okay so in the same chromosome which means that the two alleles of the gene pair are located on homologous sites on homologous chromosome or homologous chromosome na parayund same aitulla or chromosome il they are present on the homologous site which means that they are present in the same position in a chromosome right so they are not present in different positions they are present at the same position clear okay now before we learn about the theory you should be very clear with the meiosis process so here in meiosis you know that it is an equational division uh, or it is a i mean sorry mitosis is equational division and uh, uh, the meiosis is the reduction division and here in meiosis we know that four haploid set of chromosomes or four haploid set of uh, cells are produced after the meiosis so meiosis process it happens in two consecutive division one is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 i'm not going to explain it detailedly uh, just a rough po- rough picture of the meiosis i am giving here so let us see what happens in meiosis the first one is the prophase so this prophase here we can see changes be- which are becoming visible which means that the chromosome will start preparing itself for uh, for the cell division process in the prophase and pairing happens here and same way the crossing over process also happens in this stage and then comes the metaphase where the microtubules are formed and they are aligned to the equatorial plate and in anaphase they become separated chromosomes become separated and in telophase cytokinesis will happen okay it means that the cell will divide this happens in the uh, meiosis 1 and same thing is repeated at meiosis uh, meiosis 2 in that in the anaphase 2 the sister chromatids are separated and it forms four haploid set of chromosome so that is the result of meiosis process so you will be learning about the chromosomal theory in the next class now i will just uh, give you an exam i mean give you some difference between the chromosome and gene so these are almost similar chromosome and genes are uh, almost similar they act in the similar way to prove that there are some comparison between the behavior of chromosome and gene so if you take the case of chromosome they always occur in pair always chromosome will occur in pair and what about genes genes also always will occur in pair and what happens in the chromosome during cell division segregation at the time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete appo or pair of chromosome il or chromosome mathre that is one pair of a chromosome will be transmitted or it has been sent to the gamete so segregate at the time of gamete formation such that only one of the each pair is transmitted to a gamete and in the case of gene also segregate at gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete right so both are similar they act similarly and independent pairs will segregate independently of each other right so each of this independent pair of chromosome will segregate independently of each other and one pair segregates independently of other 
pair so in case of genes one pair of the gene will segregate independently of the other pair so this is the comparison between chromosome and gene it is very important children please go through it it is there in textbook page number 82 so the first one column a they are talking about chromosome and column b they are speaking about the gene right so uh, they always occur in pair they segregate at the time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair is transmitted to the gamete and in case of the genes segregated gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete and independent pairs will segregate independently of each other in case of genes one pair will segregate independently of another pair right so this is the comparison between the chromosome and gene children please read it properly uh, if you have any doubts you can ask to me uh, learn the uh, independent assortment properly if you get doubts you can ask to me on the mishwaya thank you